Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q. And in this video, we're going to take our first look at the forthcoming reward aircraft, the Tier 9 Soviet fighter, the Antonov M. Masha. Here we are on the World of Warplanes EU website, and we're taking a look at the Soviet Tier 9 fighter, the Antonov M. Masha, the forthcoming reward aircraft. And let's just take a quick look at the gallery. That's yeah, quite a handsome aircraft, I would say. And if we go back to the blurb, we can see that it's a fighter with an unusual arrangement and a powerful new engine developed in the Antonov Design Bureau as a frontline interceptor. And it's a paper plane. The project never led uh, into full production. Now, what it doesn't here say here or here is that apparently this has what I might call edge conditions, good maneuverability performance. This was trailed earlier um, in previous commentary on the aircraft, which tends to suggest that its maneuverability, both at uh, the high end of its uh, speed range and the low end of its speed range, will somehow be enhanced, a new mechanic for World of Warplanes. Unfortunately, we don't have any information on that currently. What we do have is information here, I'm going to be talking about that in comparison with other Tier 9 aircraft shortly, but I've also managed to flesh out a little bit of the information that you see in the UI but is not listed here with information from the API because the World of Warplanes team, World of Warplanes team have managed to update the API to reflect the new aircraft and you can find this one as well as the other ones that were missing. So, as I hope you expect there will be no flying in this video. This aircraft isn't available yet, so we can't do a flying video. Unfortunately, that means it's going to be a lot of number crunching. Um, and for those of you who don't like number crunching, I'll try and do a summary at the end, bringing out the salient points and you can skip to that. But you will be missing something if you don't stay to watch uh, the spreadsheet section. It's up to you. Use the links below in the video to move ahead if you don't feel like looking at a spreadsheet. But without further ado, let's go and have a look at that spreadsheet. Here's what we know about the new aircraft, the Antonov M. Masha, on the spreadsheet, uh, laid out alongside all the other tier nine fighters. Uh, I'll explain very quickly how this works. In column C and D, you'll find the new fighter. In two columns off to the right, you'll find the TA-1 83 Huckabine and then all other aircraft occupy their own pair of columns further off to the right. Down the left we can see the normal information available in the hangar UI. In light yellow we can see a couple of items that are taken off the website and these are listed in the hangar UI. We'll talk more about those as we come on to those relevant sections. Uh, in all cases, the configuration of the aircraft is stock, the equipment has been taken off, there's no pilots been sent to the barracks, but the modules are all top. Green, of course, indicates best in class, light blue, second best in class, and lilac, third best in class. Finally, if there's a gold colour under the aircraft name, it's a reward or a premium aircraft, and of course the Antonov Air Masher is one of those. So, let's examine, examine the gun armament on the Antonov M Masher. And you can see I've got here cumulative DPS of 782. Now that doesn't come from the website. So where has it come from? I'll explain that in a moment. But at first blush, being second best in class, that's really high. It's only just behind the, the high energy fighters, the Huckabine and the MEP1092. But I want to draw your attention to the cannons themselves. They're 23 millimeter NR23s. They're mounted on the cowling as it happens. Uh, let's just ignore these figures for the moment. What I want to draw your attention to is the Yak-19, and that has 23mm NR23s mounted in the cowling, except that it only has three of them. And for that aircraft, the DPS is rated at 170. So if you times um, 170 by three cannons, you get a DPS of 510. Okay, well, we've got an extra cannon on the Antonov M Masher, so that should be another 170 DPS. Well, if you add that to 510, well, when I went to school, that was 680. So where does 782 come from? Well, I'll tell you where it comes from. That's what's listed in the um, API. So if we just quickly take a look at the API first, and what we've got here is um, a query. I'm not going to go through this in detail, but believe you me, I'm looking at the guns mounted on the, uh, the masher. 
And as you can see, if you look carefully enough, let's just bring it up so I can see it more carefully myself. You can see that the DPS is indeed registered as 170 per gun. Well, four times 170, that's 680. What I've done without you seeing is now run a different query on the API. Uh, and this one uh, here brings up the DPS for the aircraft itself. Well, there it is, 782. There seems to be a problem here. We don't know whether the DPS is actually 680 or whether it's 782. The rating on the guns on the API hasn't changed from the AT-19's rate, gun rating, which leads me to believe this figure should be 680. But as you can see, in black and white, in front of you, it says 782. Well, let's go back to the numbers and we'll just discuss what that might mean. So DPS 680 or DPS 782, what does that mean? Well, if it's actually 680, it's a mistake in the API, that's very good. If it is 782 and the World of Warplanes team have fiddled with the numbers to boost the DPS, that's more than very good. That's extremely powerful for this type of aircraft. Now, I should point out a lot's also going to depend on the burst length. We don't know what that is, and I won't be able to tell you until I get my hands on the aircraft and I do a physical burst trial, because that information isn't, av isn't available on the website and nor is it published in the API. But if this aircraft has a reasonable burst length, it's still going to be able to do an awful lot of damage, whether the DPS is 680 or 782. And if it's a long burst length, like the XP-54, don't get in front of this aircraft. That's going to be pretty horrible. The final significant factor on the guns is the range, which isn't published on the website and isn't available in the API. However, given that these are the same as the Yaks guns, I think we can uh, assume that the range will be 2,625 feet, which is pretty decent. Right, time to move on from gun armament. Let's move on to survivability, and interestingly, the aircraft is rated as being the most robust of the tier 9 fighters, which is odd because it's only got the third best in class hit points. That's a decent slug of hit points, don't get me wrong, but that means that there may be something special going on with either uh, damage resistance or fire resistance, or indeed both. Uh, perhaps it's got very good damage resistance because of its des design, this uh, delta wing design without a tail. Perhaps it's very hard to damage the tail. Maybe this is going to be an unusually high figure. Possibly, for no reason I could explain though, it's got non-Soviet style fire resistance. Whatever, it looks like this aircraft is pretty robust for a fighter. Uh, and we'll have to wait until we actually have it in our hands before we understand why these figure, uh, this figure of 13 is better than any other fighter in his class. Coming to the airspeed, it's 69, it's not too bad. It's not the fastest aircraft, and probably um, you wouldn't expect that since it's meant to be highly maneuverable, but it's pretty decent. Now we've got some missing figures here, the cruise speed uh, um, and also the maximum boost speed, but we'll come on to that again in a moment. One thing that is missing, and I will have to guess at, is the boost duration. Now, as this is a maneuverable fighter, I'm inclined to think it will only be six seconds. It could conceivably be eight. I think it's highly unlikely to be like the outlying F6U pirate, which really comes from a multi role tech tree. But if it was 16, wow, that would be something. I'm going to guess it's going to be six seconds, so nothing spectacular. And you'll want engine cooling for sure as a consumable. Um, on this aircraft. Maximum dive speed, decent, third best in class. You won't be diving away from the high energy fighters, um, but you will be able to use diving maneuvers away from say multi-rolls or perhaps some of the, uh, the, the uh, turn fighters, provided you're already far enough away from them to make that work. Now, top speed at best altitude actually comes from the website. And it's okay, it's, it's uh, not in the top three, but it doesn't lag behind uh, that far behind even the fastest of the aircraft, the Pirate, the 590, uh, and the third best in class, the Huckabye 571. It's not too bad, it's not sluggish. And this um, speed, I think, is actually equivalent, at least in the case of the Tier 9 fighters, to the maximum boost speed. If you were to quickly run your eye along the uh, maximum boost speed here, 
you'll see that the figures are identical, identical for all the aircraft already in the game. So I'm prepared to bet that this 559 is actually the maximum boost speed as well. So fairly healthy, not the fastest, but pretty quick. We come to maneuverability. 71 is a pretty high figure. It's not in the class of the out and out turn fighters and certainly not the Yak-19, but that turn rate of 9.6 seconds You'll probably get that down with specialization and the right equipment if you choose to put, say, lightweight uh, airframe and lightweight power unit on the aircraft, quite likely, in my opinion, to around about eight and a half seconds, maybe 8.6, something like that. Uh, and that's going to be very competitive with um, the LA-160 and the KO-1621. Now, there's an extra point here. We're promised that at edge conditions, high speed, low speed, um, there's going to be some kind of maneuverability mechanic, that, uh, the information for which we don't have at the moment, that will apply to this aircraft. Does that mean it's actually going to be able to outturn the Yak-19 at those speeds? We'll have to wait and see, but watch this space. And it is worth noting that the stall speed is as low as a Yak-19. So um, very skilled pilots, and I'm not one of them. I very rarely get aircraft down to its stall speed as, as a, a manoeuvre to get a, an enemy off my tail, but there are pilots who can. Um, if you can use that speed uh, and there is an extra manoeuvrability gain that you get from the, the new mechanic on the aircraft, wow, that could be something too. All that said on manoeuvrability, must take a note of the roll rate, which is 120. Uh, that's actually second worst in class. Only the attacker rolls uh, uh, less well than this aircraft. Uh, and that may allow you, in aircraft such as the Goblin or the higher roll rate aircraft, to be able to watch the turn that's being used by uh, uh, an Antonov that happens to be behind you, quickly roll and do the opposite turn. That may help you escape. Coming from the website, we also have something called Optimum Airspeed, which I don't think really correlates to anything in the Hangar UI. Uh, and I'm not really sure what to make of it, because I don't think any of us really keep an eye on our Optimum Airspeed during the course of a battle. For what it's worth, it looks a little bit sluggish compared to some of the other aircraft. I suspect it actually won't make any difference to you at all. And finally, altitude performance, sort of middling. It's above the turn fighters, interesting, bear that in mind, but it's not as good as the high energy fighters, which I don't suppose will surprise anybody, given that this aircraft on the, on the basis of these figures is shaping up to be more of a turn fighter and less of a high energy fighter but looks like it's got the hitting power of it, a high energy fighter. We have the maximum opt uh, optimum altitude of 6,562 feet. I'm prepared to guess that following the attacker and the F6U pirate, though we haven't been told what the maximum ceiling is, it's likely to be 13,123 feet. Climb rate, nothing spectacular here, not too bad. Not particularly brilliant. It won't keep up with the high energy fighters. Uh, a little bit faster than most of the turn fighters, but it's not going to make a difference. You're not going to try and climb away from a Yak or an LA-160 or a KO-162. Right, it's time to summarize what I think this uh, aircraft is all about uh, based on the figures that we've just looked at. And we'll do that in the next section. Let's try and position the Antonov M. Nasher in the set of tier nine aircraft fighters in World of Warplanes. Well, as discussed in the numbers section, which some of you may have avoided, uh, there appears to be a problem with the DPS. This aircraft has the same guns as the Yak-19, save that it has four cannons as opposed to the Yak-19's three. And in theory, that should give it a DPS of 680, which is pretty good. However, as I've shown, the API lists the DPS as 782, which is beyond very good, that's almost as uh, hard hitting as, say, something like the TA183 Huckabine or the MEP1092. So we're talking about high energy fighter uh, DPS there. A lot will depend on the burst length. We don't know what that is. And until I get my hands on the aircraft and do a physical burst trial, I won't be able to determine whether we've got a, an aircraft that has a manageable uh, burst length, a short one which cripples it or makes it hard to use, or and this is a scenario we don't want, one like the XP-54 at tier six, where the uh, burst length is so long, it makes the aircraft a monster. As far as maneuverability is concerned, it lags a little behind the out-and-out -out turn fighters, the Yak-19 particularly, 
the KL1621, the LA160, uh, and it has a fairly poor roll rate, which might be useful if you're trying to get away from this aircraft. You might be able to roll away from it and stop it from pursuing you effectively. However, there's another unknown here. We're promised a new mechanic. At high speed and at low speed, we're told this aircraft is going to be extra manoeuvrable. We don't know how. There's no information on that at the moment. But what does that mean? Well, does it mean it'll be able to outturn an LA-160 if you can get it at very low speed or indeed high speed? Will it outturn a KO 1621 It could do. The manoeuvrability figures are pretty close, barring that roll uh, figure. It may even, if this, uh, extra, this mechanic proves to be excellent, be able to compete with the Yak-19. Uh, that'll give Yak-19 pilots something to think about. Again, it's probably not something that we really want, but we'll have to wait and see. In terms of altitude performance, it's going to occupy a niche between the high energy fighters, but above the low energy fighters, which means that, um, uh, sorry, low energy fighters, by which I mean, of course, the term fighters, which means it may be able to dive on those. There's another interesting point on this. The survivability, even though the hit points are lower than the, some of the other aircraft, is actually rated best in class. Well, I'm speculating that because of the absence of a tail, it's going to be hard to do tail damage to this aircraft and the damage resistance is going to be correspondingly high. But that's not a piece of information we have at the moment. To sum up, there's a chain of combat missions, and I'll discuss those in a future video um, for this aircraft. And at, on first blush, I don't think anybody's going to be disappointed when they obtain this aircraft. It looks like it could be strong. Worse, it looks like it could be, as I fear, overpowered. A lot's going to depend on that new mechanic and the burst length for the guns. And also, of course, a resolution uh, between uh, the 680 versus 782 DPS problem that I've identified. And I'll be talking to, uh, or questioning uh, the World of Warplanes team about that particular issue on forum. Whether we'll get an answer or not remains to be seen. Well, I hope you found that useful and informative. And if you did, you'll come and see future content that I produce, which will include further looks at the Antonov M. Masher, of course. But until then, this is the Noble Q signing out.